we're going to take a look right now at Tesla's hairpin circuit. Now, there's a few things missing here. Right across here, there's a spark gap. Right over here, there's two connectors that go in right there. And they generally would go to a metal plate on each side. That's ultimately unimportant right now for the reason we're building this. We look over here, we're using a ZVS to drive this. We can use a Slayer Exciter. And that's the reason we don't put the spark gap in here. Is there a spark if we did this? Yes, there is. Is it ultimately important to what we're doing? No, it's not. Here's the main understanding. This is a bipolar Tesla coil. This is not your regular Tesla coil where the primary only winds right here. We're dealing with the bipolar Tesla coil. Therefore, right over here, the winding goes all the way down right there. So now the energy coming out each side is equal. Now, in this type of a circuit, if you move this up or down, one side becomes more powerful than the other. Again, ultimately unimportant right here. Here's the main thing. Right here is his capacitor. It's an air gap capacitor, which means this right here is simply metal. This is metal, and there's air in between, and it makes a capacitor. Now, why is this important to us? Again, this goes all the way around. This is not really the problem here or anything we need to worry about. This, air, air between two metal parts, but connected to the secondary of our Tesla coil. So how do I use this in a different way? Well, it's really quite simple. All we're dealing with, when we look at this, is the distance right here. That's all I need to deal with. If I take my number two coil and I create distance and capacitance in that distance in each way. Now I have Tesla's hairpin circuit. This is the main part of his circuit. How do you do this without all this part? Well, it's relatively simple, isn't it? Well, if all I need is air in between here to create capacitance, and it just has to be between where the number two coil is and this part here. Pretty simple, right? Well, the answer was much simpler than everybody thought. Here it is. I'm simply going to place a rod down the center of my Tesla coil. You say, well, hold on, that's not a circuit. That's not a circuit. No, I get it. But the idea is 100% the same. Think about it. Center of your number two winding. I now put a rod down it. I now have my air gap in my capacitance at 360 degrees. So depending on the diameter of that rod that goes down the center, I change the capacitance level. It proves out on the oscilloscope. As this increases this way, the amount of frequency goes down. That's pretty simple. Tesla said the same thing. I just changed the way he did it. Or did I? You see, if he knew this, then what happened at Wardenclyffe? 
Why is there a simple rod going down the center of it? Well, it's because he understood if he wanted to create this, he could simply put the rod down the center like I did. You see, it's just a variable capacitor. Change the rod size, change the capacitance. Change the distance between this right here and this point right here. Change the capacitance. It's all a very simple understanding in how this circuit actually works. Am I using a version of the hairpin circuit in what I do in my work? Yes, I am. Could I make it more complicated and add all these extra parts so it looks fancier? I'm sure I could. Is it ultimately necessary? Not one bit. You see, Tesla got to this later on. This is how he understood it. I hope everybody else can understand it the same way. It simply has to do with this air capacitance right here. That capacitance is no different than this. The primary right here is simply this. And all you're doing is now running this in between. It's the exact same thing as running a rod down the center. What do you get out of it? That's one of the most interesting parts. So, all the magnetic fields, most people say, tell you right now, radiant energy comes out from your Tesla coil like this. There's not so much on the top and bottom. I could tell you that positive. The only reason that you would see it out of the top is because maybe at the top of the Tesla coil, you put a breakout up here, which changes the radius of that. So, with that known, we just don't put that top load on there. That's as simple as it gets. That negates that, so we just deal with the radiant energy coming out here. Now, the energy on the inside, how does that work? Well, it's simply pushing in. So now we clean that up and do this. Instead of it going out, it goes in. That's pretty simple. You go, well, we know there's wire on the outside and we know that how a magnetic field works, so it makes sense that the highest amount of Tesla would be in the center right there as it pushes in. That's an easy understanding. That's not really going to change much, and we're not trying to change it. We're just trying to use it. Out of this right here in the rod in the center, what do you get? You get a very high... RF. Now, a very high RF can be very dangerous to your finger in giving you burns. Not very fun, but that's what it does. But, if you reduce the size of this in here, the high RF goes away and the energy stays. Do you, by the size of this, you are now changing the direction of understanding of your dielectric field. You now push it to the center instead of to the outside. So, what's the importance of this? You're not looking for the radiant energy on the outside of the Tesla coil. You're looking for it to go into the center. So you're going to have a high value magnetic field inside the center because now your saturation point is not out here. It's in here. That's it. How do you lower the burning part of the RF? 
to reduce the size of the rod. It's as simple as that. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. A lot of people would like it to be, but it's not. Tesla knew how to build the hairpin circuit. We're now learning different ways to work the hairpin circuit based on our research. This is exactly what we're doing. Now, is it classified as a hairpin circuit by putting the rod down the center? Maybe, maybe not. I won't say either way. I just say that the energy, how you pull it out, is exactly the same. But, it's ten times easier. Instead of trying to adjust the capacitance here, adjust the capacitance right here with the rod down the center. So, I hope this helps people out. There's an easier understanding here. And, uh, are we using the hairpin circuit? I would say yes, but other people would say no. You decide on your own. The energy is exactly the same either way you want to build it. Have a great day. Before we get out of here, I just want to let you guys know that I offer memberships on my channel now. It's a really cool thing. I do behind the scenes stuff. I give you more information. I also put things out early on it. All of my Fringe Thing Tank Star Trek episodes will be on there. I just put out another one, a number seven episode. Also, you're going to get emojis on there that you can use in the live chats. They're pretty cool. And as we grow our membership, I'll be able to put more emojis out there. Just a fun way to liven up the chat a little bit. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And have yourself a great day. Thank you very much.